In this video, we're going to do more with cascading style sheets, specifically by using style sheet selectors. Now, selectors are simply part of the syntax that I talked about in that last video, uh, the introduction to cascading style sheets. Right now, we're looking at a web page that I made a little bit earlier, and I've, dis and I've disabled the style sheets. So let me turn the style sheets on. Here's the same web page, but with style sheets enabled. So I'm using CSS to control the look and layout of my web page. I'm using various selectors to control different things on this web page. I'm using universal selectors, type selectors, class selectors, ID selectors, descendant selectors, child selectors, adjacent selectors, and a pseudo class selector. Now these latter three are, I don't even want to say the least common, certainly child and adjacent are probably the least common. They're used quite often in very uh, high-end websites, but beginners often don't get into using those. Uh, pseudo classes do come in pretty handy early on because you can control various styles of anchor tags or hyperlinks. Descendants, IDs, classes, type selectors um, are used very, very often even in beginner websites. Universal selector, yeah, I'll, I'll say that's not used as often, but it comes in handy from time to time. So I'm controlling different things about this page. Now to make it easier to understand what I'm controlling, first what I'm going to do is look at my HTML. Now it's a basic web page. Uh, I mean, by that it's it's got all the normal elements to it. I am using some embedded styles in here, so I'm going to go past those for a minute and focus actually on the page itself. The page itself is in the body. I'm using a couple things here. I've got a div with an ID attribute. A div is a logical division, and we use this more and more throughout our class in order to contain something. It's a standard block element used to contain other elements. And it contains everything. Since my outer wrapper starts right after the opening body tag, it closes right before the closing body tag. It contains everything. Now within that, I have my central column, another div with a different ID, and it starts after my outer wrapper div, and it ends before my outer wrapper div ends. So everything I've done is contained within these two sets of divs. They are nested properly. One set of divs is nested within another set of divs. Now the very familiar stuff I have on my page, I've got a headline one. Now within my headline one, I'm emphasizing the word style sheets. I'm emphasizing the word selectors. And I've put a span around all three words. I have a paragraph. I have a second paragraph. And then I have something called a definition list, DL. The DL tag starts a definition list. And my definition list is made up of terms, definition terms, and definitions. So the DD starts the definition of the term. Now within my definition, I have a div. And that div has a special class called example. Now, when do you use a class and when do you use an ID? Use an ID if the element you are describing is unique to the web page, meaning it only occurs once per page. Now I could have 10 web pages in a website, and all 10 of those pages could have an outer wrapper. An ID would still be good for that. Now ID is used for something that only occurs once on a given page. A class, though, is used if you may want to use it more than once on a given page. For instance, I'm using class equals example several times. So class was a better attribute than ID in this circumstance. Each of my definitions has a div with a class where I provide an example of that selector being used. So my definition list is a bunch of terms and definitions. And finally, my definition list ends. And after my definition list ends, my column ends, and then my outer wrapper ends, and then the body of my page ends. So here is the HTML for my page. 
and I'll make sure that you can get my HTML file with the CSS embedded into it through our Blackboard site. All of that together creates this page. There's my headline one, emphasis, another emphasis, my paragraph, and my definition list. These are the terms for my definitions. These are the definitions of my definition list. And then these are the um, examples within my definitions. And that creates my web page. Now I'm going to look at the various styles I used one by one. I made sure that this page uses each of these various types of selectors. I mentioned type selector before, but I'll mention it again here too. So back on my page, let's look at my embedded styles. Body and H1 for that matter are both type selectors. Type selectors are when you want to reference a specific element or tag. The body tag, the H1 tag, the P tag for paragraph, the EM tag for emphasis. If you were to control just those tags, then it would be with a type selector. And I'm controlling the font family, the margin, the padding, background color, and foreground color. I haven't talked about hex codes yet, but I'll do that in a different video. My universal selector says that every element should have italicized text. So, when I look at my web page, everything has italicized text. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, I notice your examples don't have italicized text. Correct, they don't. Later on, I counteracted the italicized effect on my examples. But, until then, everything had italicized text. And another point, your CSS is read line by line from top to bottom. So, if I want to counteract the italicize effect on something, then I make sure that my counteraction occurs later on. I'll show you. Let me scroll down for a bit. Here's my example. Notice it says font style normal. The font style normal prevents the font style italics from applying to the examples that are inside of my definition list.